So this is tutorial 13. So uh, in this question, uh, we are going to calculate the viscosity and the thermal conductivity, but the gas is actually mixed with another gas. From previous question, okay, we found the, the way to estimate the gas, the, the viscosity, and also the thermal conductivity for one single gas, but with different uh, with different uh, condition might be uh, more than 180 m and with a certain uh, temperature but uh, sometimes we could mix a few gases so and then we need to estimate the viscosity and the thermal conductivity of this mixture so and then uh, from this question for example it is desired to form a gas mixture of 23 percent carbon dioxide 40 percent oxygen and 63 percent nitrogen at 180 m and 20 degrees celsius so estimate the viscosity and the thermal conductivity of this mixture so this is the uh, basic uh, uh, basic information about that gas so we know that the carbon dioxide we could calculate the molar mass is 44 oxygen is 32 nitrogen is 28 i think you know about these numbers so and then the mole uh, fraction here means the percentage of the gas so this is 23 percent 14 percent and 63 percent so this is the mu the kinematic viscosity you could get this from the table or any reference uh, table so it is good for you to get the 20 degrees Celsius value for for this one and this one okay and then the thermal conductivity is listed as this one so and then we could estimate the the mixture by uh, by uh, an equation uh, for this percentage of mixture okay so actually, we could calculate the dynamic viscosity mixture by using this equation. So this equation is actually the mu mix, mean the mixture, the dynamic viscosity mixture is the sigma for this one. So xi mu i divided by the total value of xj phi ij. And then the phi here is this equation. So we have phi ij is 1 plus mu i mu j m j m i m j m i plus over square divided by 8 plus 8 m i m j by the power of 1 over 2 so i hope you could uh, print screen these notes and then you could have uh, your own notes later on so i hope you could uh, make your own notes by print screen this video so and then because uh, the the equation here is not easy to to spell out in words okay for the symbol here is the m is the molecular weight and the i the x here is the mole fraction that's why it is an uh, advantage for you if you have uh, this if you could create this table so this is quite a, a favorite uh, question for this one so this is the equation and this is the meaning of the equation so what you need to do is you are going to do like this Okay, the best way is you create your own table. So you, you create a table, you, you put this is the item for J and this is the item for I. So and then uh, you are cal calculating all the terms. So for example, this is the result. I will show you how to calculate. So you have the CO2 as number one. Oxygen is number two and nitrogen is number three. You write the same things here, carbon dioxide, oxygen and nitrogen. And then you need to calculate the value of phi according to this uh, equation. And the, the simple idea is if you are calculating, because you see, if you see this equation, it is about dividing I and J. So means if the I and J is the same parameter, so you will get its own ratio. So means that you will get that the value of 1 1 2 2 and 3 3 is equal to 1 so this is the uh, basic idea if you want to know whether your calculation is uh, if your calculation is correct or not so so and then okay how to calculate it so i uh, will clear this one i hope you could print screen this so i also uh, i have video for this one 
So, and then uh, how we could calculate this one. So, it's depend on like this. So, for example, is for phi 1, 1. So, this is the equation. You must be uh, very particular about the i and j. So, because it is uh, dividing uh, itself, so you will have mu. Here is mu i and mu j. So, for phi 1, 1, for example, so we go 1, 1 here. So it is about I is carbon dioxide and J is also carbon dioxide. And then according our previous table here, so we have the carbon dioxide, the mu is 1.37. So we substitute the value here, 1.37. So here, it is okay for you to neglect the value of 10 to the power of negative 5 because it is a, a ratio, so it will cancel out the value. So, and then this is the molar mass, 44 over 44. If you do this, you will get it is equal to 1. Okay, this is very simple, as I said, because uh, it divides by itself. So, and then we go for phi 1, 2. So, we go for this table. So, phi 1, 2 is here. So, uh, this is at the row number 1. And it is go for number 2 here. So, it is 1, 2. Okay, and then you start to substituting uh, the value. So, here... The carbon dioxide is 0 0.14, is 1.92, and the, okay, this is, uh, okay, it is 32, uh, 1.92 here, so we have the value here. So if mu i, so means uh, it is 1.37, and mu j is 1.92, mj, it is 32, and mi is 44. So you substitute everything very carefully so you will get it is equal to 0 0.7269 so and then you do again uh, with uh, another uh, mixture so phi 13 for example 1 3 so you substitute everything here so uh, 28 here okay so and then you get the value of 0 0.7234 so all this value it is good for you to fill in the in the table like this because uh, if we, could, uh, if we could see the equation is, this is the equation to find the value of viscosity. However, we are now only doing the, the equation of this one. So means that just only this one, okay? So and then we need to uh, multiply with, uh, with xj. So this is the phi, and then we need to solve the equation of sigma xj phi so and then uh, the, the meaning of sigma here is the summation you need to add all the value so we could expand the the, the value depend on the value of n here so because we only have a uh, three type of gases so we, we at least we need to have three equation so it is it is become x1 you, you, you need to see the, the j here. So if the x j is become 1, so phi must become 1, 1. Phi is become, uh, if the value of x 2, so phi will become uh, 1, 2. And here phi will become 1, 3. So this is for j equal for 1. Okay. Okay, so and then uh, so okay, so you substitute the value of zero point two three times one, zero point one four times here, and this there you will get zero point seven eight seven six. So this is only for one uh, condition. So and then uh, we go for the j. It is actually j equal to two actually. Okay, so you do the, the same things here, okay, but the, the value of, okay, so, uh, might, might be, okay, please do not uh, see this one. So, and then you, you do the second one, so means that you have the x1 here, you have the phi to 1, phi to 2, and phi to 3, so you will get it is equal to 0 0.1, 1.0958.
So, and then we do the third row, the x equal to 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, and 3, 3 here. So, you will have uh, 1.0858. So, and then we, uh, we could uh, list down that the value of sigma of this one is 0 0.7. 0 0.7876, 1 1.0958, and 1.0858. So, and then we are, we need to solve this final equation. So, again, we are using the idea of sigma here. So, sigma means the summation. So, the equation is here. So, it means that we need to solve it by according to the x and y. So, and then we could solve it as this one. So, because we have a three uh, items, so the x here is actually the, if you see the terms, the x here is the mole fraction. So, now in this equation, you could see that the mole fraction now is take into account. Because in previous calculation, we only uh, ratioing, we do the ratio calculation for the uh, molecular weight and so on and so forth. So now uh, the, the percentage of uh, that gas need to be counted. So here, so uh, from this equation, so from this equation, so we have a 3 mole, so we have 0 0.23. So we substitute with the first, uh, the first gas, uh, viscosity so we put it here and we we use the first uh, value of phi the, the total of this one which is 0 0.7876 so this is the second calculation this is the third calculation and then we could uh, summarize we could solve this uh, calculation and we have 1.608 times 10 to the power of minus 5 pascal second so this is the the estimation way uh, to to estimate the dynamic viscosity for a mi for a gas mixture. Again, uh, for liquid, so it's very simple because liquid you can pour that liquid, you can mix that liquid in your beaker. So means that the calculation of dynamic viscosity using the equation like this for liquid is actually not popular. Okay, I found one or two maybe, but uh, people. It's easy for you to, to do the physical measurement of uh, mixture liquid. So, and then this is the, the calculation for the thermal conductivity. So, the idea is the same. We are using the same, uh, we are using the same uh, equation because the idea is very simple. When the viscosity is changed, so the thermal uh, conductivity also change. And if we reduce the value, we, we reduce the, the, the amount and also the viscosity. So we assume that the, the thermal, conductivity, thermal conductivity is also reduced. That's why we are using the same nature of equation, but we change the value of dynamic viscosity here with the thermal conductivity. So uh, I think you could do this according to the uh, previous uh, calculation. So... We, we solve the, the value of phi first. So this is the equation, totally the same equation. So and then uh, we create our own table. So we get all this parameter. So and then uh, we could list down the, the value of phi like this one. So and then we could solve the thermal conductivity for mixture. It can be estimated by using this equation. So we calculate the value of this one. So, and then we could get it is around 0 0.021 watt over meter Kelvin.